Can you just give me a couple of seconds before you fast forward to see the actual video? The video that you're watching right this minute is a video that I put up on my Facebook fan page. So I kind of want to show you that there's a lot going on on my fan page that doesn't go on in YouTube. So I'm inviting you to like my fan page so that we could connect there also. So if you go to facebook.com slash the tidy tutor, you'll find me. Also, you can click on the link that's in the description box or on this page where this video is living. Now the video that you're going to watch that's going to come up in a couple of seconds is a video that I did on Facebook Live on how to complete projects and not dread them all at the same time. They're little tricks that I use so that I get projects done and don't leave them half done the way I used to do it a long time ago in my slob days. Okay, so that's that. Thanks a lot for sticking around for this and let me know what you think about the video that you're going to watch right now and I'll see you on Facebook. Hello, hello. I am here and doing a uh, Facebook Live today on um, a trick that I use to finish projects because, you know, part of being sidetracked is part of being more right brain than left brained and kind of always living in a mess is that a head that we have that we are kind of got that shiny object syndrome. We're all over the place, right? It's very difficult for us, us to focus. Um, I call us organizationally challenged. We like to do a lot of things. We are very creative. There's lots of things that we um, want to go to. You know, we feel like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. And we get really tired at doing the same thing. After a while, we don't want to finish it. So I have some tricks, tricks on how I actually do accomplish those things because I figured out that we don't tick the way the left brainers do. We are a little bit special and we think differently. And so since we've been trying to do things the organizationally gifted people's way and it never worked for us, we were wondering why? Why didn't it ever work for us? Why is it so? Why can't I do what they're saying we need to do? Like, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who wrote Seven Habits for Highly Successful People, um, Stephen Covey, right? Thank you for the hearts. I love the hearts. Stephen Covey said that what we need to do is prioritize, right? Make a list of things that we need to do and prioritize them and do first things first. Well, for people like us who are more right brain than left brain, everything is a priority to us. Everything is. And so we look at that and we're like, are you kidding me? How do I choose? How do I it, we get overwhelmed easily. It's very difficult for us to break things down. So we can't do things their way. But you know, the thing is, is that people who are more left brained, they're able to get their ideas focused and put them on paper and get them out there for the rest of the world to see. So the people who are more right brained, because we aren't focused and there aren't, there's nobody out there teaching how to be who we are. What they're doing is they're diagnosing us. They're diagnosing us as something. We're ADD, we're ADHD, we're this, we're that, we're, we're you know, we're dreamers, we, are, we, we can't focus. There's nothing wrong with us. It's the way we tick and all we need to do is know how to be the way we are in the way we are. You know, do things the way we are, opposed to the way we're not. Doesn't that make so much sense? So here's what I do, okay? I don't know if you knew it, if you noticed, but on my Tiger Tutor fan page, I have a video that I did of me painting. I, I'm, I just recently moved into a real fixer upper and we are in the process of remodeling the kitchen, right? The kitchen was a wreck when we got there and, you know, it won't be a wreck soon, but it's pretty difficult to, to deal with, right? There's so much that has to be done. We have to lay the floor. We had to do something with the heating. The heating was actually outside the wall, pipes and, and, um, and rubber tubes that I guess they use now for plumbing was outside the wall. So that had to get put into the ground. There was a, a stupid room dividing wall that was like, what the heck are you doing here? It was such an eyesore. There was a hole cut out with shelves in it. The cabinets were atrocious. I can't even begin to tell you. I can't wait. I'm doing videos as I go. I can't wait to share them. And you know, the, the, there was beams on the ceiling, as you probably will see. If you didn't see it yet, you'll see it. It's on this page. You can watch it. It's fast forward while I'm doing it, right? And as I'm doing that, my, me, and, me and Lily, it's my granddaughter. She isn't painting. She's just there dancing around while I'm painting. I'm saying to myself, you know what? 
I hate finishing a project. I love starting them. Love, love, love starting them. You know, give me slippers to crochet. Give me a painting to start to do. Give me a room to paint. Give me anything to start. I love to start. Hate to finish. So I had to figure out how do I do this? And while I was doing the painting, I said, you know, this would be a great thing for me to share because I'm in the midst of it right now. And when you're in the midst of something, it's the best time to share what it is that's on your heart because you're the most excited about it. So that's why I decided to do this. So I'm going to, I have right here on my phone, I wrote some notes to myself so I can stay on track of what I do. All right, here's one thing I do in the area of, say, home improvement. All right, if you have anything that you have to do in home improvement, Start in a place that you know that by the time you're done with one little section of it, you can do something in that section that revitalizes that feeling you had when you started. You know, like when you begin a project, the reason we love to begin projects is because we love that feeling of what we want at the end, right? But then we get like, oh my God, this isn't fun anymore. This stinks. If it isn't fun, we don't want to do it, right? So after a while, it's like, if this isn't fun anymore, we don't want to do it. So if let's let's pretend you're painting all right you're painting a room so you start at one corner that you have a window on okay and you start at that corner and you work your way around by the time you're done with the second wall you're feeling that crash i don't want to do this anymore feeling so what you do is you go back to that wall with the window on it and you hang a curtain because by that time that wall had has been dried Okay, you go that back to that wall and you hang a curtain. Now, if that isn't possible because maybe that particular wall with the window, you know, you don't have a curtain that you're hanging on that window or something, then do a wall that you know you're going to hang a beautiful picture on. All right. Now, it's a good idea to get the picture first because you know what we're going to want to do. If you don't have the picture first, if you don't set yourself up for success, you're going to end up like you know, wrapping your paintbrush in cellophane or um, what do they call that? Like handy wrap or something uh, or putting it in a baggie, wrapping the roller in a, a grocery bag and then running out to the store to buy a picture. And then you'll stop for lunch or something. And then by the time you get back, it'll be like, oh my God, now I have to make dinner. You know, think about how you tick and what you do, the holes that you step in so that you could say, whoa, I, I call this be your own mommy. I say this in my course all the time. Be your own mommy, all right? It's like when you're, you know, three years old and you wake up and you say, can I have ice cream for breakfast? Well, you know, no, you can't. We take care of ourselves. And so we, we as the mommy, teach our children, you can have ice cream after lunch. First, we take care of ourselves. Then we give ourselves treats, right? But when we're a grown up, we don't have a mommy. So we have to be our own mommy, okay? Now, please, if anybody here has had a mommy that they're not really fond of, or of course you love your mother, but maybe your mother was somebody that wasn't really good to you or something, I'm not talking about be your mommy. I'm talking about you being your own mommy, okay? The mommy to yourself. So say to yourself, I'm, I'm going to get a nice beautiful painting for this wall or a nice wall hanging or a beautiful plant to hang there or something, all right, something that you would do in that section of the room so that by the time that second wall dries, you can go back that you can set when you feel like I don't want to do this anymore. You can go back there, hang the picture. Now all of a sudden it bubbles back up bubbles back up. Oh my God, this is so exciting. I can't wait to get this done. And then you'll do the next wall. And then when you feel like the crash and burn again, go to another section in the room that you can do something that will spur that in you and do it. All right. And that will continue all the way around. Now, if at a port, port yeah, if at a point in time, you're like, mm, that ain't going to work. I don't care if I hang another picture. If I see this paint color again, I'm going to scream. Right. If that happens, then wait, let me look at my little notes here. Then have another little project in the house, especially if like in my case, every room is a wreck, right? Every room I have something to do in. So find another section in the house that you can be excited about too and spend 30 minutes in there all right by the time you have gotten that 30 minutes done right in that room the feeling of dread about the paint would have like waned the excitement of getting the house feeling good will make you feel better if you're in a mess right now then maybe you can do like a dejunking project in another room right 30 minutes is a really good amount of time. Even if you decide to work for a full hour, and this is another one, all right, let me go on to that. So you got that one trick, okay? So another thing that you can do that will help you to keep with a project and not quit is to do things 30 minutes at a time, 
okay? Now, a lot of times we'll want to do something for an hour. We'll say, I'm gonna to commit to an hour, and that's fine. Commit to an hour. Or even sometimes, maybe we have the day off or something, and we say, I am going to commit this whole day to this project, whatever it is that it is that you wanna do, right? All day today, on Saturday, on Wednesday, then I'm off, on Monday, then I'm off, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna love it, right? Do things 30 minutes at a time. Even if you want to go all day, like I said, or one full hour, we can go 30 minutes and keep going knowing that there's going to be a ding at the end of that time. Make sure that you set a timer, all right? Timer, knowing in our mind that there's going to be an end to it is going to help you keep going. And then after that 30 minutes, you want to go another 30 because you're excited, right? Go ahead. Set the timer again for another 30 minutes. And then take a break. All right, we tend to go to a point of no return and then we never want to look at it again. So whatever it is we were doing in the house or whatever it is that we were doing at all, we get to the point where it feels like, you know, you, you like you work in a chocolate factory, right? You started out loving chocolate, you ended up hating it. Oh my God, if I never see another piece of chocolate, it will be too soon, right? See what I mean? So that's what we do. We are amazing creatures, us right-brained people. We're spontaneous. We are lighthearted. We feel like we can conquer the world and we can do anything. And we jump in with both feet and we are so gung-ho at everything we do. But what we don't recognize is the burnout point. We go, we go, we go, we go, and all of a sudden we crash. So if you recognize this about yourself, then you say to yourself, I'm not going to get to the point of no return. I won't let that happen. So what you do is go for 30 minutes. You want to go another 30 minutes? Do it. All right. But at that hour point, take a break. Okay. Take a break. If you want to go two hours, all right. If you want to go two hours, I'll let you do it because I know that depending on the project that you're doing, two hours can go like that. All right. But I'm telling you this, okay, as somebody that's been doing this for a long freaking time and working with people for a long time and seeing what happens, force yourself to stop, take a break, do something completely unrelated, and then go back to it. Because then you will not get to the point where you never want to see that project again and you won't revisit it for a long time, okay? That won't happen. So do that, all right? So that's another thing that will help you to stick to a project. Do it in 30 minute increments and then take a break before you go back to it, all right? And then you won't reach burnout, okay? All right, so let's see, another thing. Um, I have something that I do this all the time for myself. I do this on a regular basis. When we have something that we want to achieve, a lot of times, and this is why people who write their goals actually achieve them, because they remember, right? It doesn't leave their mind. They're not like, oh yeah, I know I wanted to do that, and then it gets mixed up with the rest of the stuff we wanna do, right? I have something I call a um, star chart and a heart chart, right? So the star chart is a 10 day at a time for 30 days, so it's 10, 10 and 10. I'll put the link to it in the um, comments so that you can you can have it if you want it, all right? And then you can just print it out. And this is in my course, TTU, okay? So 10, 10, and 10, and they're stars. And this is something that you can do because you want to stay faithful to something and you want to stay faithful to it every day. So you say to yourself, every day this month, I want to stay faithful to my daily routine. Or every day this month, I want to stay faithful to my exercise routine, which might be maybe exercising three days a week and walking two days a week. And then you want to keep that going all month, right? So that would be that would be the seven-day chart, though. That would be seven days. Okay. And the reason that I have the difference between the 10 days and the seven days is because some of, sometimes you want to break in between, like say exercising, right? Say you want to exercise only three days a week. Well, you don't want to have a 10-day chart. You don't want to have something where it's 30 days. It'll look like you're slacking, right? But seven days you can have, and it has a date on it. So you have the date, you write the date. And then what you do too is you color it in. It's not like an X. It's not like, uh, you know, you write it down. It's fun, all right? It's something that is a little bit fun, and it gives you kind of like a reward. And if you only do half of it, you can color in half of the star or the heart, right? Like say you say, you say I'm going to exercise um, 
30 minutes a day, three days a week, right? But you only exercise 15 minutes one of the days, you, you color in half the star, right? And what I do is I put it in a frame and I hang it on the wall. And then it's always in your face. So say it's a project you're doing with um, like crochet, maybe you wanna make slippers for everybody for Christmas next year. So you got all the yarn, right? You got all your little projects, we love crafts, right? So you have everything and then, you know, I mean, there was one time that I started a needlepoint that now the kid is about 30 years old now, I think he is, he's 30 years old, and I, I didn't finish it. I actually donated it to the church so that they can make it for somebody, because honestly, I didn't finish it. And that was in my slob days, okay, because I am a reformed slob. Slob stands for spontaneous, lighthearted, optimistic, and beloved. And that's a term that was coined by Peggy Jones and Pam Young and Peggy Jones, who are authors of Sidetracks Home Executives, a really cool book. I suggest that you read it, it's great. What are we on? What are we on? I'm going to look at questions and see if anybody has any. Um, so the goal, the star chart or the heart chart, that works really good to help you to stay on task of the things that you began to finish. Because for one thing, it's always in your face. You always see it. And you have a way to track it, right? You have a way to track it. Say whatever project you're working on, you say, I'm going to crochet this. I'm going to um, finish the, I'm going to de-junk my, my garage. I'm going to clean up my kitchen and get it presentable. And I'm going to do it in 10 days. I'm going to do it in 30 days. However much time you've decided to dedicate to it, you can then schedule it in. And then it, you, you're free to be guilt-free from it. You're free to not think about it anymore because you've got it on paper, hanging on a wall in a frame and you use a Sharpie. That's what I use. I use a Sharpie on the glass. I put the printable inside the glass right and I color it in with a sharpie and then when I'm done I just erase it erase it with um, with alcohol it comes off with alcohol or nail polish remover really easily and I begin again and then it's in your face and you're like all right well I did it um, I said I was gonna do it three days a week I did it my three days this week and then you're free you're free okay next week I or say I said I was gonna do this project five days a week for an hour and so you do it say you only did a half hour today color in the half hour and the ones that you know color it in half and the ones that you didn't do so what you know we always beat ourselves up for not getting, not hitting the mark, which is ridiculous. Nobody is good at anything when they first start or when they're practicing or 100% of the time. You know, who was it? Um, Babe Ruth, I think. He hit the most home runs. He was like the, the home run king, but I think he struck out more than everybody else. It's not about how many times you're up at bat. It's how many times have you hit it over the wall, okay? so. Another thing that it'll do for you too is it'll help you see your 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 trend, your um, your pattern. So if you said if one of the goals you set was I'm going to exercise every day, I'm going to exercise seven days a week, walk three days a week. I mean, exercise three days a week and walk two days a week. And then you find that you're only walking one day a week, or, or you're only exercising two days a week and you're walking. So you just adjust it. Now you see what works. You saw what didn't work. Now you see what does work and you adjust it and you say, well, from now on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just walk one day a week and exercise two days a week, or I'm going to exercise two days a week and walk three days a week because that's what works best for me. Or I'm not going to do anything on the weekends because obviously I'm not doing anything on the weekends. So from now on, I'm just going to throw that out and I'm just going to do it during the week. See what I mean? It's only those that are on the road that hit the bumps. When you're, when, if things are not working for you, be happy because that means that you're working something. How can you know what's not working if you're not working it, right? The thing that screws us up is that we think there's something wrong with us and we quit. See what I mean? So that's my little tips and tricks on how to um, how to like stay focused. You give yourself something that gives you a happy distraction that will refuel your desire that got you to begin it to begin with. You know, we need a starting point sometimes. And I get it, I get what you mean, that you can't even stay focused to start. Because when we see the whole picture, especially when the whole picture is jumbled with a lot of stuff, a huge agenda, too much to do, we don't know where to start, right? For us right brain people, it's kind of like our life is like a ball of yarn that is tangled, right? If somebody knows where the end is, oh look, here's the end, it's easy. It's kind of like finding a dollar bill in a library, right? If I tell you there's a dollar bill in the library and it's in one of those books, you could go a lifetime and never find it. But if I say to you, there's a dollar bill in the library in Gone with the Wind on page 22, 
you'll find it like that. And I'm telling you, for the person who was right-brained and scattered by nature, amazingly creative, um, an amazing person within because we think there's something wrong with us. So that's why I keep emphasizing that because there is so much right with you. It is that simple. There's no excuse. There's no reason. It, it's just a simple fact that there are some people who are not born knowing how. And so you got to learn. And once you learn, it's easy. It's easy. I'll put, I'll put the link in the chat of how you can get started with my course, Teddy Tutti University. It's brand new, it is all updated, and also I will put in the chat um, how you can get the star chart and the heart chart. Works so great, really, really does, so fun. That's also part of TTU. All right, okay. Um, all right, I'll sign out now, love you guys. <laughs> you got bugs called the bug guy. Bacon apple pie. If you show your picture, tear clean or clean my underwear. These are the things we do. The house is a mess with all the junk. The sink's clogged up with dinner time gunk. You pick up the phone and call the rotor rooter to make it all work. You call the tidy tutor. Pretty good, uh -huh. don't you?